Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is this uh, clip I found on TikTok about this guy talking about um, the similarities between all of these pyramids, ancient pyramids that have been found all over the world, and how there must be some kind of connection um, because of you know the similar construction styles. And the fact that, yeah, that all over the planet they have these uh, step pyramids that are much older than uh, what we've been led to believe. Also have this video here of this pyramid-shaped UFO dropping some orbs over uh, Medellin, Colombia. And let's see, and this is a video like, I, you know, I played uh, several of these videos of this, I, I don't, I mean, there, it's so small, there's no way this can be an insect unless it's some unknown species, but I don't know, you know, it just seems so linear. But uh, this has to be at least the fourth or fifth video that I've um, uploaded of this exact same thing. I don't even know what to call it, a creature, an object, but uh, we'll take a look at that. And uh, let's see, and I got this one here um, of this uh, flying orb you see right here. This is filmed by a helicopter over a, uh, a fire a brush fire and um, they caught this little orb moving towards the fire. Also have this video here, this is an old video of the two people. This guy Joseph Ferrer got a photograph of this cigar shaped video and this guy Harold Trudell actually got video of this, this of, um, of the same crap. Actually I don't know if the same crap, it's the same shape. Uh, let's see and then this is a long video of Clifford Stone um, acknowledging that our government um, has has basically lied to us about studying UFOs and um, how he was a part of a, a crash recovery team. Uh, let's see, and then this is a clip of this guy, Major General John Olson of the U.S. Space Force, who's asked about um, UFOs and UAPs, and you know you have to listen real closely to his answer because he actually never answers the question. He parses his words very carefully and um, sort of doesn't actually answer the question, but just, you know, um, yeah, uses all these, yeah, a lot of words come out of his mouth, but he doesn't really say anything. So, you know, we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's see, and then this is like, you know, I'm saying this is the, the, the disclosure episode because uh, apparently today it's all coming out. This is Ross Coldhart interviewing this um, this military whistleblower, um, acknowledging again, acknowledging that our government does have a UFO crash retrieval program, and um, yeah, and he was a part of it. Uh, let's see, and then this is a a little clip I found on Reddit talking about why our government doesn't want to tell us about UFOs, tries to um, obfuscate the whole, the whole subject. And this is an article from August of, 20, of 2010, right? Churchill ordered UFO cover-up, National Archives show. So this goes back to the 1950s. So, you know, when you hear NASA talking about, or anyone in the government talking about, oh, we still have to study it, they've been studying this thing since the 40s. Okay, since the 1940s, and it's yeah, so it's all been a cover up. But but you know, disclosure it's, it's slowly coming on. I've said this before. Disclosure is not a one day event where you're going to get uh, you know a, a leader of a country coming out and acknowledging that we aren't alone in the universe. When the reality is, we're not even alone on this planet. But uh, yeah, that's never going to happen. Disclosure is an ongoing process which we are in right now. You know, and it's, it's all of these different news stories and articles um, slowly coming out and getting us ready for, you know, what, what I think is going to be a major event. I, yeah, I, I don't think our government's ever going to tell us. I think, well, according to John Ramirez, a retired CIA officer, um, there's going to be some kind of major event. I don't remember if he said uh, 2025 or 2027. But anyway, let's look at that. Uh, and then let's see. And then this is an article from The Debrief that talks about, um, yeah, this guy here, same guy, that's this guy here, 
So it's in this article here, and also I got this article from Barstool Sports, same thing. Intelligence official says that the government has recovered intact UFOs of non-human origin. And you know what this tells me? This, the fact that this is in Barstool Sports, it's in the debrief, um, it's you know here on this News Nation, that um, this is all a coordinated event, right? Whoever this guy is, he was given permission, right? He's he's a yeah. He was tasked with releasing this information, and he's only going to release you know whatever the government approved information. Because yeah, I've come to realize, any time, you know, multiple news outlets and newspapers, websites, all have the same story, it's because there, there must have been a press release put out. And, you know, and they're all working off the same information. Uh, and then, like I said, yeah, here, you know, these are um, links to uh, Twitter that different people are talking about. This guy here, David Charles Grouch. But anyways, uh, let's go to this um, video here now. I'm gonna go ahead and try and play this whole thing because this guy really has a lot to say. Now, I mean, you know what? And in order to avoid copyright, I'm gonna have to stop it several times. You know, I'm gonna have to to break it up so it doesn't play. You know, all the way through as uh, as one clip. But anyways, check check out what he has to say exist on earth then this will change your mind and blow it at the same time okay so this is a map of pyramids all around the world all allegedly built independently of each other and all having identical structures that follow this similar step pattern now i know most historians will tell you oh it's just the easiest tall structure to build it's human nature it's so easy why are our 21st century brains not capable of doing what dozens of ancient civilizations have repeatedly been able to do we got the famous pyramids of Djoser in egypt but everyone knows about those across the world there's chichen itza pyramids the Los yeah, I want to say something about this this Chichen Itza pyramid. If you um stand in front of the pyramid and clap your hands, it actually <clears throat> um replies, you know, uh, with the sound of a bird. He chose Tikal Temple, the Great Pyramid of Cholula, among others in Mexico. And then on the other side of the planet, we got Koh Kher and Prasat Bakse Chem Krong in Cambodia. Off the coast of a tiny Japanese island deep within the ocean is the sunken Yonaguni Monument, a supposed 10,000 years old, older than even the Egyptian pyramids. All with a nearly identical look, yet built by completely different cultures with zero contact among each other and thousands of kilometers apart. But this is just the tip. We got way more lesser known pyramids, even older than the Egyptian ones that ain't even standing anymore. Like the Gunung Padang Temple in Indonesia it doesn't look so hot now, but used to be a step pyramid a whole 9,000 years ago. At least that's what they thought, until a more recent radiocarbon analysis shows that the lower parts of this temple go as far back as 28 thousand years. Then this enormous hill in Bosnia was studied and almost every archaeologist that visited it confirmed that it could not have been naturally formed, perfectly aligning to true north among many other characteristics of pyramids. These studies found out this hidden monument is over 35,000 years old and would be the oldest and largest pyramid in the world hidden under years of vegetation. But the Bosnian government strangely halted further study on this thing for some reason. There's a crazy story behind what they found there which honestly deserves its own video so I'll probably be dropping that sometime. The fallen pyramid of Hellenikon in Greece has bold that are joined so tightly that even a human hair can't fit through the joints without any sort of ancient cement used. Built around 3000 BC, meanwhile, an almost identical masonry techniques was found in these walls in the city of Cusco in Peru called Saskehuaman, over 11,000 kilometers away. And how old are these walls? Mainstream history will tell you they were built around the 15th century, but researchers recently uncovered a writing system built directly within the blocks of these walls that's well over 30,000 years old. Again, a topic that deserves its own video coming soon. This exact... Yeah, yeah, look, what's interesting is I think these uh, these curved stones is very interesting. And yeah, I want to also point out, you know, what we've been taught about our ancient history, completely wrong. Those, yeah, the, the uh, academics in the past, they got it completely wrong. Um, there's no doubt, again, based on all of the current evidence that there were highly advanced civilizations here on planet Earth before we came along. And, um, yeah, you know, we, yeah, we've always been taught that our past was only, they were, they were only primitive humans, right? Um, Stone Age, Paleolithic, Neolithic humans, whatever. But, but, you know, I'm, I've come to the conclusion that um, living alongside primitive humans were highly advanced civilizations. 
just like today, right? We would consider ourselves to be an advanced civilization, right? I mean, we're sending probes to, um, to Mars. We're sending probes out to the edge of our solar system. And we're, you know, we're able to send back images, signals, right, from outside of our, from the edge of our solar system. So, yeah, we would consider ourselves to be an advanced civilization. And, you know, we know for a fact that there are these uncontacted tribes or uncontacted yeah, communities, like living in the middle of the Brazilian rainforest who are essentially still living in the Stone Age, right? And we live right alongside with them. They have no idea we exist, right? Like they, they, have, they know nothing about microwave ovens. They know nothing about um, bacteria. You know what I mean? They don't, they, I don't think they know anything about, um, about the planets in our solar system, right? They don't know what's at the bottom of the ocean. They don't know what a submarine is. They don't know what a cell phone is, right? Because they are still living in the Stone Age, and yet we live right alongside them. And you know, I would venture to guess that the majority of, you know, of our uh, society has no idea that they still exist. But anyways, let me keep going with this guy. Back method is also found on a site called Ahu Vinapu on the remote Easter Island, older than even their legendary Moai heads, as well as Khafre's Valley Temple in Egypt. How did our ancient ancestors figure out these identical building techniques completely independent of each other when we still have no idea how they did it to this day? Now we get to the Ellsworth Mountains in Antarctica. Okay, get your tinfoil hats ready for this one, because this satellite footage from 2016 shows what could be a pyramid buried in the South Pole. This map from 1513 by sailor Piri Reis shows a perfectly accurate coastline of Antarctica even though it wasn't officially discovered 300 years later in 1820. What's weird is this map connects South America to Antarctica, which it could very well be that over 10,000 years ago, these two continents were connected by a sheet of ice. Researchers claim this map was sourced from an even more ancient document that survived from the Library of Alexandria in Egypt, which was destroyed by the Romans. What if the builders of Giza left this map as directions as to where else they put pyramids around the world? And the pyramids are just the start. Take a look at these ancient artifacts from Bolivia, Turkey, Indonesia, and Israel. Island, four completely separate corners of the world, all with identical carvings and artistic styles. Yeah, look at all of these have this uh, the hand placement around the stomach, which is uh, very interesting. Use and again, thousands of kilometers apart and absolutely no contact among each other. Just another coincidence, right? Now get a little. No, yeah, he says there's no contact. I, I, I disagree. There must have been some type of contact. The fact that you know they all shared similar um, construction styles. And, and the same motif would tell me that there was con there was contact between them, and, and, you know. And, and um, yeah, from, from these objects were so you know heavy, we have no evidence of how they were able to move such heavy stones. So you know, I would conclude they they had some type of anti gravity, um, or, or um, yeah, some way to defeat gravity. So they must have uh, communicated and had contact and shared technology. For this one here, I know it sounds crazy, but you'd be surprised. Ancient lasers, or at least some form of precision cutting technology that is on par with our modern drilling methods. From these perfectly cut stone patterns in Pumpapungu, Bolivia, to the unfinished obelisk at Aswan and the boxes at the Serapim of Saqqara in Egypt, made of granite, one of the hardest materials ever, with insane accuracy only achievable with today's technology. The Al Nasla rock in Saudi Arabia literally looks like a giant laser beam just cut right through it. Meanwhile, the Kailash Temple in India, which was somehow cut into a cliffside with perfectly symmetrical hallways carved with copy paste level precision. Not to mention the perfect doorways carved into Barabar Caves thousands of years earlier. And these star holes found in Flint Quarry, Massachusetts, and even all the way in Norway, all indicating some sort of highly advanced drilling or precision laser technology used. The incredible list of similarities among these ancient cultures tells us that they all clearly had some sort of external influence that guided them, which they actually recorded proof of directly into their stone tablets, wall carvings, and hieroglyphics. All right, that might be enough for- Anyway, so that's that. Uh, let's go to this next video here. Pyramid. Yeah, you know, initially when I saw this video, I wasn't uh, com convinced that it was real, but um, yeah, after looking at it a few more times, I, I think it is real. Anyways, check this out. It's only a minute 28.
Yeah, now this is, you know, this craft was what um, Jeremy Corbell, or the video that Jeremy Corbell released that he got from the, uh, from the Navy ships uh, in, in that infrared. I think they were surrounded by several of these pyramid-shaped uh, UFOs. Yeah, now I have no idea what those flashes are, or what's you know what's um, exploding up there. If it's something that, it, that the pyramid is releasing, or if uh, the military is firing something at this thing. Yeah, and you know, and this is the this is the shot that uh, convinced me that this was actually in the uh, image. You know, when you see this building here, what else is on here? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, a link to all this will be in the description. Let's check out this video here. Yeah, like I said before, you know, whatever this thing is, I've uploaded four or five different videos so whatever this is it's been captured multiple times on this ring cam or on you know in on, on, on other security cam so i have no idea if it's a i mean i just don't think it's an insect because it's just too linear but i couldn't imagine you know a, a teeny this this has to be so pretty small anyway let me just back this up a little and uh, play this Anyways, that's that. Link will be in the description. Let's go to this one here. Yeah, now this is kind of interesting. This was filmed from a helicopter that was um, uh, putting out fires. Check this out in San Bernardino. Yeah, look at that thing. That is going directly to the fires. These are the images. Again, you know, whatever this is, this has been caught multiple times <clears throat> on different cameras. <clears throat> Anyways, link will be in the description. Let's go to this one here. This is the cigar-shaped craft that was seen by Joseph Ferrari, and, Her and then Harold Trudell has a video of it. Check this out. the best video so you know you're gonna have to um check out the link yourself let's see let's go to uh this video here you know this is a long video it's almost 25 minutes long <clears throat> but this is from the um the disclosure project um uh, stephen greer's disclosure project that took place in november of 2001 i think it was but this is clifford stone basically talking about you know how our government does cover up the uh the ufo phenomenon and he knows because he was part of a crash retrieval team that um you know routinely told people that yeah nothing's there's nothing there anyways check this out 
morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Clifford Stone. I was a Sergeant First Class, United States Army. I had a secret clearance with Nuclear Assurity. I could get the clearance that I needed to do whatever it was uh, that was necessary for me to do at the time on special operations when I was called in on those. What I'm referring to here is that I was involved in situations where we actually did recoveries of, tra of crash saucers, for lack of a better term, debris thereof. There were bodies that were involved with some of these crashes, also some were alive. While we were doing all this, we were telling the American public there was nothing to it. We were telling the world there was nothing to it. But the whole situation is, we've set back, we've told the American people that there's no such thing as UFOs. I've been involved where we have recovered these objects. We know them to be of extraterrestrials. In 1969, I had an event that happened to me while I was at the station at Fort Lee, Virginia. We went to Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. That would be my first exposure to any time that we would be recovering an unidentified flying object. When we went there, we already had people that was already in the, in the facility. We were a backup team, which was supposed to be NBC because there was supposed to be some nuclear materials that was on board this craft. Now, I just want to say one thing. I think the reason why, right, the United States is the only country that has U.S. military bases all over the planet. There was like Russia, China. They do not have, you know, satellite military bases all over the planet the way the United States does. And I don't think it's, you know, that they're there for military purposes or to keep a, a, you know, an eye on our adversaries or our enemies. I think the U.S. has military bases all over the planet is because that, you know, that's where these crash retrieval teams are located. So they can get to these sites immediately. Because from my understanding, right, just like, like whenever our planes, right, anyone flying a plane, a pilot is in distress, right? They send out a a, um, a, a help signal, a mayday signal. And I'm, I'm sure our advanced neighbors, right, whenever their ships are having problems, when they know they're going to crash, they do the same thing. They send out a distress call. So, you know, when their, when their uh, ships crash, it becomes a race between us and, you know, and, and the species that crashed. Who, who can get to that crash site first and, uh, and recover the craft? But like I said, I think that's the reason why um, the U.S. has military bases all over the planet. It's not for military reasons. It's so that we can get to these uh, crash retrieval sites quickly. Later on, most people involved would have been were were to be told that there was nothing on board. It was nothing more than just a crash of one of our aircraft. I know better because I was one of the people that approached it with a Geiger counter to get surface readings. I was the first person to go ahead and see that there were bodies on it. That would be the first of approximately 12 events. UFO crashes are not events that take place every day. They're rare. I know we're not alone in the universe. I know that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It's evidence that has been denied to the American people. And one thing, we're definitely not alone on the universe, but more importantly, we aren't alone on this planet, which is why, right, there are literally thousands of reports of UFOs exiting our oceans and entering our oceans. There are videos of UFOs entering volcanoes and exiting volcanoes, right? There are stories of crafts coming out of lakes, right? That, that, you know, we have um, flight corridors here on this planet, right? And, and you know, I, I understand that we don't have a lot of sensors or people out in space or on other planets, so we're not seeing them out there, but that in no way invalidates the thousands of reports of UFOs reported here on this planet. And, you know, a lot of times these guys, I think, you know, they, they always say extraterrestrials or, you know, we're not alone in the universe. And it's, it's, to, um, it's to distract people. It's to, it's to get people to focus, you know, out into space as opposed to here on this planet. Anyways, check this out.
I stand before you today in my almighty God and I tell you this, if Congress calls me in and says, will you testify in detail what you know? I stand here today prepared and ready to do just that. Governments must never lie to the people for no reason. Remember, this took place in 2001, right? 22 years ago. And, you know, I've, I've shown you um, other reports of our government talking about UFOs from the 1950s and the 1940s. So there's no doubt that our government has been studying these for a very long time. So anytime you hear, you know, our Congress or NASA talking about, oh, we have to do more, uh, more research, th th again, they're lying. <laughs> they're lying to us about that. They, they know a lot more than they're revealing. Anyways, let's go to this next uh, video. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, yeah, this, this is a guy, you know, from the U.S. Space Source Major General John Olson. But I want you to pay attention to how he never really answers the question, right? He just, he, yeah, he, a lot of words come out of his mouth, but he doesn't say anything meaningful. So, anyways, check this out. Mohammed. Major General Olson, what do you think about the unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, and UFOs? Well, this is a very hot topic, and I appreciate the question. I know, admittedly, unidentified aerial phenomena and task force is quite a mouthful in an acronym. You know, I've gotten that question a couple other times. You know, you know what do you think about UFOs or, or aliens? And, and quite frankly, is this... Uh, having flown um, 83 different airplanes and, and had lots of hours, we've all seen lots of unexplainable uh, elements. And, you know, the cosmos, the, 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 the space realm is so large. Uh, if we look at the, the Earth, it is this, you know, tiny blue dot in, a, in an unlimited, uh, almost incomprehensibly large cosmos. I personally believe that they're, they're absolutely, from a probability perspective, is, 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 is life out there. However, this task force is, is a very serious U.S. government approach to systematically investigating and understanding these because, of course, unidentified elements uh, present a national security concern, present a safety of flight, present a risk uh, that we must take and diligently pursue. But I think the, the, the question is, is, is actually more broadly put, and that is, is we will continue this effort. And in fact, I believe it will be getting more funding um, and, and, and more of a, a, a structural support level uh, within the department. But I also believe that this is part of our never ending quest to learn and understand and explore. And as we have on our probes that have exited the solar system to uh, our probes to the moon, we have gone in peace to explore and discover, and we continue that yearning to see and discover, is there a life out there, and what does that mean for humanity? See, now, again, the question was, what do you think about UFOs and UAP? Do you think that that response adequately answers the question? Because I sure don't. And uh, secondly, off of UAPs, is there any cooperation with allies or partners on the UAP question and probe? Uh, thank, thank you very much. Again, listen, right? Uh, yeah, he's asking about our allies and whether, you know, we're working with them. Again, he's going to give them a, he's going to say a whole bunch of words, but he's not going to answer the question. I think the second part of your question uh, was related to UAP or unidentified aerial uh, phenomenon and that UAP task force, um, and 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 as far as I'm concerned or, or, or am knowledgeable above about that, I do believe it does involve collaborative inputs and um, information exchange with all kinds of countries around the globe because I think these are not just uh, solely um, uh, actions or or or. or, or uh, uh, events that have occurred within the con uh, confines of the United States, they've, they've occurred globally. And I think we're collecting that information. Uh, we're sharing information. We view that as an open and transparent effort and activity through uh, through the United States Congress and, and, and executed by our UAP task force office. And so I, 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 I would encourage greater uh, collaboration and cooperation in that. And particularly, 
I think as we see uh, various technologies that will help uh, demystify or debunk or clarify. Um, but but I think it's also important. One of the one of the reasons that we are doing uh, this effort is because now. Let me just stop this right here, Ryan. This is this. He's not answering the question. Let me see what the question was again. Humanity. And uh, secondly, off of UAPs, is there any cooperation with allies or partners on the UAP question and probe? Uh, right. Yeah. Guys, asking you know whether or not we are working with our allies on. UFOs and UAPs. And again, he, he doesn't answer the question. Bunch of words come out of his mouth, but he says nothing. Anyways, a uh, link to that will be in the description. Let's go to this one here. But yeah, so now this, you know, this is um, something that's just coming out today. And like I said, anytime all of these different news stations are all talking about the same story, reporting on the same story, it's because there must have been a press release put out. And um, yeah, they're all just reading from the same script. But uh, let me just start this at the beginning. Meeting on UFOs, which, by the way, are now called officially uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. This is a year after launching a study into unexplained sightings. And now tonight, a worldwide TV exclusive you will only see right here on News Nation. Bombshell claims from a military whistleblower published just this morning, alleging a secret UFO retrieval program within the U.S. government. David Grush, an Air Force veteran, former member of that task force and veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence intelligence agency now formally blowing the whistle on secrets he says no one has ever shared publicly before he is speaking one-on-one -on -one with investigative reporter ross coldheart reporting for news nation when you say crash retrieval what do you mean uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh technical vehicles you know call it spacecraft if you will uh it's probably not the right parlance but uh no kidding non-human exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed we have spacecraft from another species we do notice how cold heart says we have spacecraft from another species he didn't say extraterrestrials or he didn't say aliens from another planet right he said another species because cold heart knows that these crafts originate from this planet and again if that is the case Right. I mean, we, you know, we've seen cigar shaped craft. We've seen cylinder shaped craft. We've seen the pyramid. Right. The triangle shaped craft, the boomerang shaped crafts, uh, the um, circular orbs, you know, and then the classic saucer shape. And then, you know, there's some that are also um, oddly shaped. And, um, you know, I, I didn't add it to this one, but I found a report. Of, um, of a mass sighting that took place in Brazil. I don't remember what year it was, but these people saw craft that was 10 kilometers long, which is, I think, you know, 10 kilometers is probably like six miles, maybe five or six miles long. But, you know, in, in, the, in the, the, um, the illustrations, the craft, you know, they had a uh, next to a plane. It's like these crafts are uh, 50 times the size of a plane, 50 to 100 times the size of a, of a um, commercial plane. So if we have, we have advanced species here on this planet and they're flying around in these crafts, right? Where are these crafts being built? Right, because I don't think, you know, even as highly advanced as they are, I don't think they're just like snapping their fingers and, and making these crafts appear. And I don't think they're able to just, you know, think them into existence, right? Like anything else, these craft must be being manufactured someplace. There, there has to be factories somewhere here on planet Earth, I would imagine, right? Because again, we're not you know, we, we have a bunch of amateur astronomers out there, right, pointing, pointing their telescopes out into space. And um, I'm not hearing, you know, a lot of uh, astronomers, amateur or professional astronomers, right, uh, detecting or talking about seeing crafts entering into our solar system, right? We have a bunch of sensors, you know, we have uh, the satellites that are, you know, in, in low Earth orbit that, that are constantly detecting craft exiting our solar or exiting our atmosphere and entering our atmosphere. 
So, you know, they, um, they go out into space, they may go, go to other planets, but they're also coming back all the time because this is also their home. Anyways, let me keep going with this. Yeah. How many? Quite a number. All right, tune into Vargas tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, yeah, quite a number, right? It's, again, it's, they're, they're not, I'm sure some of them are visitors, right? But not all of them. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, so this little article here talks about why the government um, tries to uh, obfuscate this, this subject. Anyways, let me give this a quick read. We aren't getting disclosure because the U.S. government has committed too many heinous crimes. Time and time again, we hear of UAPs killing people, people being blackmailed by government officials, death threats, virtually everything to keep secrecy secret. I personally believe too many horrible things have happened behind the scenes for our government to come forward. The USA has committed countless war crimes on other nations. We've done a few bad things and constantly never acknowledge our bad behaviors in the past. I know this is a huge blanket statement, but we don't apologize our invasions or occupancies, and we watch other nations make flags that depict pure evil and hatred become illegal. Meanwhile, we keep everything we've ever done. Any kind of UAP disclosure narrative we officially receive will not be from anything old. No Blue Book, no Foo Fighters, no Roswell, no uh, MJ-12, no nothing. And imagine they are picking up every loose end to create a new narrative that only acknowledges new data without having committed in inhumane atrocities. That's all we're going to see. And that story seems to start with a small metallic anomalous sphere, spheres. Yeah, you know, I've said this before, um, that you know, one of the reasons why you, you're never going to get like a leader, right? Like a president or a prime minister of a country coming out and announcing to the world that, um, you know, we're not alone in the universe or, you know, we're not alone on this planet is because, they, you know, yeah, it's because too many people's lives and too many people's careers have been derailed by revealing the truth, right? I mean, this, yeah, this idea that, you know, pilots can now, you know, that, that the stigma has been lifted and pilots are now able to talk about the crafts they see, they're able to, you know, videotape them and release those videotapes, whereas before, all pilots knew that if they did see a UFO or UAP, they weren't allowed to talk about it. Or it's not that they weren't allowed to talk about it. They just knew that if they did talk about it, they would, you know, most likely be deemed crazy and, um, you know, having their flight privileges just taken away. So they, used to, you know, they would self-censor themselves. But yeah, but it's, yeah, it, it's, it's for, um, Legal purposes, because if again, if the if a government official or government leader does come out and reveal that UFOs are real and that you know there's been a cover up for the past seventy years, eighty years, then all of these people who had their lives ruined, their careers derailed, would have grounds to sue the government, and the government is not going to open themselves up to legal liability like that. So yeah, I think that's. That's also one of the major reasons. But anyways, uh, let's go on to uh, this um, article here. Here, This is from 2010. Churchill ordered UFO cover-up National Archives show. So yeah, this came out in 2010. It says, the government took the threat of UFOs so seriously in the 1950s that UK intelligence chiefs met to discuss the issue newly released files show. Ministers even went on to commission weekly reports on UFO sightings from a committee of intelligence experts. The paper also included a wartime account claiming Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered a UFO sighting be kept secret to prevent mass panic. The files show reports of UFOs peaked in 1996 when the X-Files was popular. The Joint Intelligence Committee is better known for providing briefings to the government on matters relating to security, defense, and foreign affairs. But the latest batch of UFO files released from the Ministry of Defense to the National Archives show that in 1957, the committee received reports detailing an average of one UFO sighting a week. The files also include an account of a wartime meeting attended by Winston Churchill in which it is claimed the Prime Minister was so concerned about a reported encounter between a UFO and RAF, RAF bomber that he ordered it to be kept secret for at least 50 years to prevent mass panic. Nick Pope, who used to investigate UFO sightings for the MLD, said, The interesting thing is that most of the UFO files from that period have been destroyed. But what happened is that a scientist whose grandfather was one of his 
Churchill's bodyguard said, look, Churchill and Eisenhower got together to cover up this phenom phenomenal UFO sighting that was witnessed by an RAF crew on their way back from a bombing raid. Anyways, um, you know, the uh, link to the article will be in here. It's kind of long. I don't want to read the whole thing. This video is getting a little too long, so let me hurry up and get through this. Now, this is from the debrief. Now, this is, yeah, intelligence officials say U.S. has retrieved craft of non-human origin, right? This is basically about this guy here. A former intelligence officer turned whistleblower has given Congress and the intelligence community inspector general extensive classified information about a deeply covert program that he says possesses retrieved intact and partially intact craft of non-human origin. The information, he says, has been illegally withheld from Congress, and he filed a complaint alleging that he suffered illegal retaliation for his confidential disclosures reported here for the first time. That I don't believe. Right. I think, yeah, this is a coordinated um, effort, right? Yeah, that he's he's coming out with all this stuff. Otherwise, he wouldn't be allowed to go on um, any type of a uh, you know news station and, and reveal that our government um, has been has been you know um, collecting crash uh, UFO debris or retrieving crash UFOs. Let's see, other intelligence officials, both active and retired, with knowledge of these programs through their work in various agencies, have independently provided similar corroborating information both on and off the record. The whistleblower, David Charles Grosch, 36, a decorated former combat officer in Afghanistan, is a veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the National Reconnaissance Office. He served at the, as the Reconna Reconnaissance Office's representative to the United Aerial Phenomena Task Force from 2019 to 2021. From late 2021 to July 2022, he was the NGA's co-lead for UAP analysis and its representative to the task force. The task force was established to investigate what were once called unidentified flying objects or UFOs and are now officially called unidentified anomalous phenomena. Yeah, you know, they had to change the name to anomalous because initially they were called flying, right? But there's too many reports of these crafts being seen underwater. Right, and you don't fly underwater, and also, you know, these crafts go from from the water, they fly through the air, and then they go out into space, and you're not flying into space. So that's why they got rid of this um, the term flying, and they just call it anomalous phenomenon or UAP. The task force was led by the Department of the Navy under the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. It has since been reorganized and expanded into the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office to include investigations of objects operating underwater, right? And they're operating underwater because that's where they live. Or that's where some of the species live. Remember, we're, we're, yeah, we're not, when we talk about these, you know, these advanced uh, civilization or advanced um, species that share the planet with us. It's not just one or two. There are multiple. I mean, I've heard anywhere from four to 11 additional species that are sharing the planet with us. We are not alone on this planet. Anyways, this is the um, article. And then this last one here, same thing. This is from Barstool Sports. This is it. U.S. intelligence officials say that the government has recovered intact UFOs of non-human origin and then yeah these are just the uh the links to the uh the twitter posts objects retrieved are of exotic origin non-human intelligence materials include intact and partially intact vehicles this is the biggest story in the ufo world since the 2017 nyt expose yeah so it's about this you know the same guy but anyways um yeah disclosure is an ongoing process it's happening right now you know stories like this are all part of the process it's not a one-day event but anyways if you like things like this please give this video a thumbs up please share this video and importantly please subscribe to this video because yeah YouTube will not um, promote in fact they you know they work real hard to suppress this information right I mean yeah I you know yeah you know I'm I subscribe to a bunch of other um, different you know ufo channels or people that talk about ufos and it's amazing how how little um views the, the, yeah, the, the uh how little views to get and the um their subs the, the subscriber numbers are are uh, really really low you know even though they've been around a long time like you know like i like watching um uh, matt's off-road recovery right videos i mean this is just a, a, a you know a tiny uh, off-road tow recovery out of out of Utah and yet he has over a million subscribers he puts out a video right it gets 
tens of thousands of views, you know, within a day. With you know, he gets thousands of views within an hour, and I find it hard to believe that um, more people would be interested in a obscure tow company in Utah than this, you know, than the subject of UFOs. I mean, I I know that UFOs is our very popular subject, right? That's the reason why there are so many UFO programs on cable, right? And there have been UFO pro, you know, so many UFO programs on cable because it's a popular subject, right? A lot of people have an interest in UFOs, but any of us, right, any, any of the people um, that make these UFOs, but you know, except, right, if, you know, if, you know, if you're putting out UFO videos and you're going, oh, I don't know what it is. Uh, it could be China, it could be um, Russia, you know, we don't know what it is, right? It could be people from the future, right? As, as long as you're, uh, pushing the narrative and um, not revealing the truth, you know, especially that you know that these crafts originate from from uh, from our planet, then yeah, those channels do get pushed. But yeah, channels like me that that are actually trying to reveal the truth, they suppress. But anyways, um, yeah, so please subscribe. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this video. So um, that's it. Take care. Till next time.